Okay, so earlier today, uh, we did our very first Facebook Live teaser. Will and I talked about doing it, and a big hats off to Will behind the camera um, for this whole setup. Will and I decided we're gonna do, at 1 p.m. tomorrow, a chopped liver, beef liver, demonstration here on Facebook Live. That's Ella the Cat with the background lyrics, uh, background vocals, sorry. Nothing, okay. Uh, I've got a bunch of emails and comments from people asking for the recipe so they could do it along with me. And I thought, you know what, I'll show you the prep. It's a super simple recipe. There's really four ingredients. There's raw beef liver, and ideally it's uh, peeled and trimmed for you, or a whole lobe, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, peeling and trimming the, the liver, it's kind of icky work, but uh, for some of us it's kind of in that gory, fun category. Uh, caramelized onions, and in this case, there's schmaltz fried onions. I alluded earlier to schmaltz. Schmaltz is just a uh, rendered chicken fat that's been simmered with onions. There she goes, that's perfect. And uh, uh, that's all it is, chicken fat simmered with white onion. But of course, you could always substitute uh, really any fat you wanted to for schmaltz. Poultry fat is the best chicken or goose or, or uh, duck, of course, but I keep my uh, bacon fat from when I, I uh, roast off my bacon in the mornings and I collect it and I cook with it. And so using pork fat, beef tallow, uh, there are all kinds of substitutes to schmaltz, but this one is the classic. You could also, of course, use, if you wanted to, olive oil. No problem at all, it's a wonderful oil. I'm gonna show you the fundamentals of uh, of slicing an onion, for those of you who enjoy this kind of thing. I'm using a knife that I bought actually on uh, Salt Spring Island. It's got a mostly flat edge to it, and uh, that makes it an excellent vegetable knife. Um, so, uh, Mary Weber says, our cat sounds like a very old, drunk Janis Joplin. I like that. Well, her name is Ella Fitzgerald, and uh, we call her, of course, just Ella for short. And she's taken to being very verbal in the last few months since she's lived here in Tofino, British Columbia. Um, she was a champion on the drive out here. We drove across because we wanted to try and make it as unstressful on her and stressful on us as we could. And uh, she really was, except for the fact that she tried to barricade herself, Ella did, in every, was it La Quinta that we stayed in? Yeah. They were all pet friendly uh, uh, two-star hotels on the way across North America. She was mostly a champion. So thank you for, for noticing, Ella, and thank you for giving me some, uh, some of your time. So you can see that I've peeled and trimmed all the onions. Uh, simply keep your, your uh, holding hand fingers dug in and uh, cut a straight line to the back from the top to the south, the root part of the onion, not slicing all the way through if you can. And then try and do uh, a couple of slices on the way through. Sometimes you will detach it. It's not the worst thing that ever happened to somebody, as I'm demonstrating right now. Uh, and then I can even put another slice in too. Then, uh, in this case, I want larger pieces of onion because I'm slow frying, pan frying in the schmaltz. And um, the onions will cook down a lot. And if I were to dice them, like this size, they would, like this size, they would absolutely disappear. So I'm keeping them on the larger side, like this size, the bigger piece, um, such that when they shrink, they'll still be visible. And so then I cut down the length of the onion and I make it maybe a half a centimeter per slice. It's not science. Not dicing, but slicing this time. And then even these parts at the bottom, unless it's part of the root and it's not edible, don't eat it. But if it comes apart nicely like that, eat the whole thing. Uh, I'll show you one more time. This was the top of the onion. And if when you cut into it, you've got some parts that don't look as nice, again, feel free to trim them. These kinds of uh, 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 trim you might end up in your uh, compost or in your stock bin, depending on how edible they are. Cutting through all the way, 
but not past the root. Cutting two slices, and then I've got four. And then long slices again, the length of the onion, and then just one slice to free the onion from the core. And this time the core, because I didn't cut it very well lengthwise, is mostly whole. And again, that can go into the compost or into the stock. And these are two that I had sliced earlier for the, try and speed this process up. So again, you're gonna want uh, one onion per pound of beef liver. I'm using two pounds of beef liver, so I'm gonna use two onions. I'm also gonna do hard boil and then refrigerate uh, two eggs. So I'm gonna do all this tonight. I'm gonna take my two eggs, hard boil them, schmaltz, is gonna go into the uh, pan over here. How much schmaltz do I use? Well, I've got about uh, three tablespoons here. My frying pan has been heating up. I like cast iron a lot. Uh, cast iron is wonderful because it can help you to control the heat it holds its heat very, very well. And so you can maintain um, the desired temperature for a length of time. And that's what schmaltz fried onions really require is time and patience. So I'm gonna do all that tonight. I don't think I separated this one properly. So uh, Sid Lieberman says, uh, He's heard if you keep a spoon in your mouth while chopping onions, your eyes won't tear up. So I've heard, thanks Sid, I've, I've, uh, I've heard every different combination of uh, tricks that, that you won't cry when you're cutting an onion. Um, frankly, I don't think anything works. I remember in the restaurant when the guys would be in, in let commode and we would have literal 50 bags of onions that were gonna go through the, the chopping machine and it's like a cloud of onion gas, and it just you can't help but tear up. Even people who would work with the onions constantly, a spoon in your mouth, a pin in your mouth, I mean, you know what works is goggles, because then it, a, uh, the acid doesn't get at your eyes. But beyond goggles, I don't know anything that actually uh, uh, works like that. Uh, I've got the... Um, onions on medium, I would even lower them to like a three. And you don't want to fuss with them as much as you can because when they stay in the pan, especially in a cast iron pan like this, and are not fussed with, they'll get really nice and golden brown. Uh, try not to move into the char territory, of course, but you want really nice fried, golden, golden, uh, onions and this beautiful schmaltz. I've been saving this for a few weeks and this is a perfect occasion to uh, to share it. Lisa Ahari said that she was uh, just recently singing the praises of schmaltz. You know, I, I actually have a book by Michael Ruhlman on, called Schmaltz. And thank you very much, Lisa, for, for tuning in. Uh, this is my mother's recipe for chopped liver that I've promised to finish tomorrow uh, on Facebook Live. 1 p.m. Pacific time, and I'm giving everybody the recipe tonight and this quick mise en place um, uh, demo. Will is also opening the, gla the uh, sliding glass door so we don't set off the alarm in this place. Uh, again, one onion, whole onion, per pound of beef liver. I've got two pounds of beef liver, so I use two onions. One egg per pound of beef liver, two pounds, two eggs. These are going to be hard boiled. When you're hard boiling an egg, yes, there is a technique to it. Use cold water and cover the eggs in the pot. So if you've only got one or two eggs to boil, don't use a big pot, use a small one like this. Cover the eggs and start with cold water. Why? That'll help the whole egg um, uh, solidify at the same time I'm sure it's happened to you before maybe where you've used, uh, you weren't thoughtful of, the, of using cold water perhaps, you used warmer or hot water and the egg didn't cook all the way through, that might have been why. 
and I will use the uh, small element with the small pot, the smallest amount of water that I can. My onions are sizzling away in the schmaltz. I'm going to let those go. It's now 8.35 my time. I'm sorry to be getting this on the air uh, so late at night for our demo tomorrow. This is our first time doing this. In future, we'll be a little bit more thoughtful to get the recipe and ingredients together uh, before, let's say, 12 hours before the execution <laughs> instead of uh, at uh, 20 to 9 at night. But we appreciate your, your being with us and your patience. So the star of the show is beef liver. And chopped liver was always one of my favorite uh, foods. And I remember my mother simply could never make enough of it and keep enough of it in the fridge. With myself and my two brothers and my father all being fans of my mother's beef liver, beef chopped liver I should say, uh, I, uh, I can assure you it, it doesn't last very long in the fridge and it didn't last very long in the fridge. So uh, I'm going to wash my hands once again. And uh, you can never really wash your hands enough these days. I've touched a lot of different surfaces, although we certainly keep it very clean here. Can't be careful enough, right? So I've got the oven preheating at 350, and I'm going to bake my beef liver um, for about 45 minutes. It should be cooked all the way through. It might be a little bit pink, and a little bit pink is just fine. When I pan fry the beef liver steak that Will and I made for the Bradshaws tonight, they are slightly pink in the middle. I don't cook it well done like maybe other people or other generations have. Uh, that's not casting aspersions, I'm just saying. I know that my father always told me that growing up, his mother used to make my grandmother, my, my, uh, I never knew her actually, she passed before I was born. But my father's mother uh, used to uh, cook it until it was shoe leather in his, uh, in his recollection. And so when I uh, was making the steaks for the, uh, the Bradshaws tonight, again, I cooked the stuff until it's just um, uh, pink in the middle, call it medium. Liver often comes with a very uh, tough silver skin, and I, I peeled most of it off. In fact, at the co-op, they peeled it for us for the most part. And then when I was trimming over at the Bradshaws, I cut out, you'll see some of the veins like this that are, are uh, less pleasant to eat. And when you try to chew on them, you'll know what I'm talking about. Best to simply keep this apart. You can scrape this down and uh, feed it to your, your cat or your dog per your veterinarian's advice. Uh, and it's also the kind of thing that when you're making um, liver steaks, that having chopped liver on the menu in the restaurant is always a good idea because it's a place where you can use a lot of this trim instead of just throwing it in the garbage. So uh, liver, steaks and chopped liver are wonderful for you, excellent sources of iron, but as some would say, it's an acquired taste. This is a taste you will never acquire. This you don't want to eat, and you can simply discard it, and I'll throw that away later so I don't have to touch any um, uh, undisinfected surfaces. This is also trimmed from earlier tonight. But now you can see that all of this liver, and maybe you can't see, I'm not sure how close the camera can get, We'll upgrade our technology as uh, time and budgets allow, uh, but the, uh, all of this liver has the silver skin removed and these uh, larger holes that are not even as big as my finger uh, aren't worth removing. I've done a pretty good job earlier tonight of trimming this up. So what I'm gonna do now is bake off my, my uh, beef liver that's now been skinned and trimmed and uh, I'm going to wash my hands one more time. Working with liver. Should I wake the waters off? Yeah. Working with liver can be a bit of a bloody um, experience. You can see it maybe on the, uh, on the cutting board. And uh, I'm sorry if it freaks you out, but I'll tell you right now in case it would. Uh, 
you really get to feel uh, the wonderful texture of liver when you're, when you're working with it. So I'm going to use a... Um, you can use one of those silicon baking mats if you wish. I use a tin foil. Mostly because this uh, silicone cookie sheet has been cleaned with a scrub brush, so it's not food safe any longer. And I would rather use the shiny side, shiny side or matte side? Shiny side, one of the important sides of the, uh, the tin foil. And then I season. Season salt and pepper on the beef liver. Quite generous. What can I say? I'm a generous guy. Fresh pepper. Why did I never see this before? Our, oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> And I, should, I can show my bike as well. I've got that neon uh, in our, in our uh, cooler as well. I've got a fetish, it seems, for uh, neon yellow. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, my, my onions are, my schmaltzy onions are frying down nicely. They're getting a little bit golden. Again, try not to fuss with them too much. My hard boiled eggs are hard boiling away. My liver is going in the oven. It's now quarter to nine my time, which uh, I know is like past or almost midnight for a lot of people in the Eastern time zone. Oh, this could go in. No liver for Ella. Oh, that's right, that was for Ella. I'm so mean. She doesn't eat it. But uh, yeah, we can clean this up for Ella. Uh, what else? Two eggs, salt and pepper, liver, uh, onion. That's the recipe. And then we put it all together at 1 o'clock tomorrow. How so, long are you cooking in the oven for? So the, uh, the liver's gone in. It shouldn't be more than 45 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer for uh, half an hour. Alexa, set a timer for half an hour. 30 minutes, starting now. And uh, I'll check and make sure that see how well it's cooked through. Um, the onions I'll keep an eye on for about the same period of time, another 45 minutes. The eggs will be done in the next uh, couple of minutes. A hard boiled egg takes about four minutes. And uh, uh, it hasn't been quite four minutes yet, but I'll, I'll check those in a couple of minutes. And, uh, and then really, we're done. So Until tomorrow. One o'clock tomorrow, we'll put it all together, and we'll put it in. Uh, you can you, you can do it by hand if you wanted to. Anthony Rose at his wonderful restaurant Fat Pasha does a table side chopped liver, and of course, uh, the most famous one is is uh, uh, yeah. Why am I? Where's... I don't know. I don't know which one you're talking. Are you talking about? Sammy's. Right? Sammy's. Uh, thank you. Sammy's Romanian. And oh my God, I almost I almost uh, whiffed on Sammy's. My father brought me to Sammy's when I was uh, 18 years old, and I probably ate more in that restaurant than I've ever eaten in my life. And my father and I are literally bursting in our seats, and the, the server comes over, a very charming guy, and he says, uh, did you save any room for chocolate pudding? And uh, we're like, it's homemade, isn't it? I brought it in the cab from my mother's place in Brooklyn tonight. It's made by my own mother and her illegal kitchen in Brooklyn. It's a family recipe. Amazing. <laughs> Sandy's a wonderful traditional uh, uh, Jewish restaurant in, in uh, the Upper West Side, Lower East Side. One of those sides, kids, the Lower East Side in uh, New York, and uh, brisket, nothing gets too much more uh, uh, culturally Jewish, at least in my life, than brisket. So we've got the chopped liver, 
I'm going to show you at some point how to cure your own uh, brisket. If you want to make corned beef or pastrami or smoked meat, I'll show you my secret recipe. Uh, so Willa picked this baby up today. It's uh, uh, 3.7 kilograms, so seven and a half pounds, and uh, beautiful, beautiful brisket. Uh, when it cooks, it'll finish up around this size and will lose about at least 20% of its uh, weight again. So you can count on it feeding um, uh, seven people, eight people, depending on what else you're, you're, you're feeding them. And uh, it freezes really well too. So uh, uh, one o'clock tomorrow, Pacific Standard Time, one boiled egg for one pound of beef liver, one onion, uh, a few tablespoons of schmaltz, and if you don't have schmaltz, any fat will do. You can substitute oil as well if you wanted to. And uh, uh, salt and pepper. Yeah. 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, that's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, back in Ontario, and uh, my family beef chop liver recipe. See you tomorrow.